This begins a new series to be done in November, um, reflections on different ideas, and it's going to be improvisational, so there's no, um, there's no hesitation on my part to actually make the effort to do it. Um, the first topic is going to be faith. And I think faith is a very easy concept to dismiss. Um, one thinks of religious faith and thinks that it's irrelevant for the modern age. Um, the very, the most obvious and most simple approach to this is thinking of faith as belief in something without evidence. Um, that's very obvious, that's very simple, and that's been said very often, and I think it means very little to people who actually describe themselves themselves as faithful. Um, I think they'd prefer to see faith as uh, akin to hope in the unfor in the un in the unforeseen rather than the rather rather than simply the not seen. Um, am I one to describe the value of faith in the water modern world? Of course not. I'm just uh, you know a particular young man. I think one desires a lot of emotion to be put into these kind of things. Um, one desires to see that the person who is attempting to give you their thoughts is also emotionally invested in the topic they're speaking about. Um, so let's let's attempt, instead of just kind of having this very disinterested way of talking about it, let's take a personal story from my life about faith. Um, to be honest, I don't really understand the word at all. I think it's... It, it, but and yet it means so much to so many people, and and there's something touching about it for someone who describes themselves themselves as faithful. Um, but let me first get out of the way the ordinary, the the very colloquial use of the word faith in religious contexts. Now, if someone says they do something because it's part of their faith, they're they're kind of trivializing the word to mean as a as a euphemism for religion. I'm doing something for the sake of my religion sounds much harsher than I'm doing something for my faith because it sounds as if you have a, an emotional commitment to something that you're you're obligated to fulfill a part of and you're actually doing a duty by by fulfilling this whereas if it's simply ascribed to the religion we you know we as observers tend to realize that people do things for religion, not for any emotional or or obligatory reason, only for the fact that it's it's the conceptual framework under which they've allowed themselves to subsist, in which they've allowed themselves to materialize in the world as purposeful beings. <clears throat> to say that another way, they've built a house out of religion, out of which they like being seen within, and which gives them the rationale for everything they need. <clears throat> they don't need to go hunt looking hunting for food because or they don't need to go hunting for shelter every night because their shelter is already there in the basis of that religion. Faith used in a real context, however, um, as opposed to this religious idea, would have to mean something like a commitment you have. Um and, and and it's there it's so easy to get very, very trivial about these things. And I think if there's anything I'm going to do, attempt to do in these videos is to avoid triviality. Now, the way you get trivial with this idea of faith is that you hope for something material, um, something tangible, and you're simply just expecting it in kind of this very offhand sort of way, in the same way that you expect to get a raise at work, or you expect to... Um, be happy when you know your new new your new puppy arrives or your new car you purchase your new car. Any kind of simple material ex expectation I think should be ousted out from this from any viable concept of faith. Faith has to be realized in terms of um, well that's what I'm exactly what I'm trying to work through. Faith should be realized in terms of an emotional commitment to something that you are not suspect expecting any reward from. It has nothing to do with tangible rewards, um, nothing to do with 
with validating your appearance as as religion usually is does um, and it has everything to do with with trust um trusting in something perhaps because the the, the any sort of relationship based on faith would not be trusting in the sense that I don't know why or that this should happen, but that I feel a commitment to this thing because it encompasses so much in my life um, that that it deserves it deserves the trust I'm currently giving it. So so as long as 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 long as we break away from from ideas of faith that are so as that are materially rewarding, I think um, we're going to be able to see more easily eye to eye from secular and religious viewpoints. Because I think the the main bar to um, any real conversation between secular and religious people is is misunderstanding of objectives. Every single human being that has a healthy mindset um, and we can clarify what that means later but any human being that has a healthy worldview I think wants a similar wants to achieve similar goals the only change is in the method by which people achieve those goals um, if a secular person says that faith is only the lack of is belief for something which for which there is no evidence um, you're essentially claiming that the other person is completely irrational and if someone of faith says that someone who doubts uh, because there is no evidence would never see the light of of the truth regardless then they're claiming them of some kind of lack of spiritual intuition so both sides are claiming that one the other is la in entirely lacking in a faculty, which obviously if that faculty does exist in the human being, then it should be there. Not saying that people aren't, can't be irrational or that they can't be <clears throat> spiritually or intuitively dull. Just saying that the argument should not begin from premises of lack because there's no way to achieve, there's no way to achieve real communication starting from those arguments. So if you want to speak to a religious person, asking them what their faith means to them, you have to escape every every sort of blind trust and also every sort of attempt at at ra you know ras rationalization within the religious context because to get to get down to the point to get down to minuscule historical points or or comparisons of probabilities and things like that um, is is going to be impossible because there's people smart people working on both sides of any issue that won't see eye to eye and my objective is always going to be look at the deeper rooted motivations because both sides are going to have motivations no one is purely rational following the truth um, some people more than others yes but the reason they're able to do that more often is because they're lacking psychological blocks and blockages that in other people make them pursue pursue different avenues rather than just following what what um, certain standards of reason would have them believe now this is this has been a again a completely rambling, off the cuff, um, irresponsible attempt at a video, but it's at least just an initial attempt in order to get me thinking again, trying to speak out loud thoughts that that otherwise might just be bottled up and needlessly. Um, so that's where we're in for now. And tomorrow, hopefully, again, I'll I'll add something else.